Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very interesting edition of El Supercast. Interesting. With me today is fellow El Supercast teammate, Centroid. Hi. So, you recently went on a adventure of sorts. As I usually do. Into the realm of uh, liveness. Uh, somewhere in uh, the vicinity of the Big Apple, mm-hmm. with uh, certain people that we know, can you enlighten us on this little uh, quest of yours? Absolutely. I attended the Aqua Teen Live show in New York City on t- this past Tuesday. It was nothing short of awesome. I could say that much. Um, you know. Uh, Dave Willis and our friend Mr. Dana Snyder performed uh, with many, many other people also. They had uh, the gentleman who plays uh, live-action Carl in the live-action episode. He was there. And yeah. How was how was the interaction between live-action Carl and Dave? Oh, it was, it was interesting. They um, story, Story-wise, they ended up hiring him to all the puppets that were made for the uh, show. They have four puppets. They have a Master Shake, a Meat Wad, Granny Squid Billy, and a Carl. Really? A Carl puppet? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. I wish I could have been there. Mm. Uh, that would have been a sight to see. Yeah, it was fun stuff. And and uh, it was similar to the one, because I know you went to the show uh, last year at Santa's Party House in New mm. York. Uh, it was similar, but they they definitely added a lot of stuff onto it. So, in in puppet terms, did it gain some weight? Puppet terms, yeah. I oh, think huh. the, I think the puppets definitely added to the show. Good, good, good. So I saw some of your pictures that you uploaded to the interweb. Mm-hmm. Uh, that live action Carl was eating uh, multiple pizzas. What was all that about? Yeah, well, like I said, he was supposed to control the puppets. Apparently, they hired uh, the story is they hired him off Craigslist, and Dave didn't want the Dave didn't want them to hire Dana to hire anyone from Craigslist. So they tell him, "Well, we're not ready with the puppets yet." So he goes, "Well, all right. I have uh, my the union that I work for. The puppet union tells me I need to take a two hour break." So. And this is like in every different uh, town that they've been in, he's eaten something different. I heard San Francisco, he ate uh, buffalo wings. <laughs> uh, I believe in Philly, he more than likely ate cheesesteaks. Uh-huh. And uh, in New York, clearly he ate pizza. Yeah, yeah, which yeah. Was, which was pretty funny because he had three boxes of pizza, and he only got through like the first box. And after a while he ends up leaving going off the stage and everyone that they would pull up onto the stage for like the they had a meat wad contest where uh, they had they pulled people up to try and sound like meat wad mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and things of that nature stuff like that Think people that they pulled from the audience throughout the night would uh, and some of them actually grabbed the pizza as they were walking back off the stage <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, you think about it this way, man. You're going up there to participate and most likely make a jackass out of yourself. Oh, you, yeah. might as, you might as well grab a slice of pizza off of it. Mm. <laughs> Especially in New York, you know. Oh, man. So, who, who, who was the best or, in quotations, best meat wad? Um, I mean, for the most part, they were mostly the same. There was one guy, you know, they didn't, I don't even remember if they said their name. Oh, they did. But, you know, who remembers? Any of the yeah. audience members. Uh, but there was one guy that was pretty good. There was also a girl who, uh, they passed her the first round. Uh, Dave puts on the Meatwad puppet and pretends he's Meatwad, like, uh, kind of a, they kept calling it America's Next Top Meatwad. So he was, like, playing the part of Tyra Banks, basically. And he sees the girl, and he's like, well, uh, <laughs> you get a pass because you're pretty. All right. Oh, that, that, so that they, they, they passed her the first round for being a girl, and then the second round, she was actually pretty 
We did a pretty good meat wad, and I believe she was the one who won. All right. Sounds pretty good. Yeah. What other uh, randomness went on at this show? Well, uh, probably one of the highlights of the night. Um, there's a gentleman, he goes by the name of Big Mike uh, from the band Tongo Hiti who performed a few of the songs from the show 12 Ounce Mouse. Uh, Tongo Hiti actually performs every Thursday night at Trader Vic's out in Atlanta, and we know Dane has talked about that many times, as <laughs> have I. Uh, but they brought Big Mike on uh, a few of the tour dates. I know uh, particularly Philadelphia and New York in, in general. Uh, him and a friend of his, or I don't know, who, I don't know who the friend is, or maybe someone he's a fr- family or something. I don't know. But he performed as, and also I should uh, point out that Big Mike really is big. He's like a giant man with the voice of an angel. And he performed as uh, Puddles the Clown, his name was. Basically, and you've seen my pictures. Yes. Uh, Giant hulking clown uh, in, you know, the white face paint with the big crown on, and he slumps to the, you know, he slumps to the stage with a microphone. I think he's going to be like, oh, I'm a sad clown. But... He just starts. He opens his mouth, and it's like it's amazing. And there are there are videos of him on YouTube. If you look up Puddles the Clown or Puddles Pity Party, um, you can find. You know, he's done a few uh, songs that they've performed. Oh, that sounds really good. Yeah, the best had to be. He sings this song called "Hey There, Lonely Guys," mm-hmm. and he goes out to the. He, gets off the stage and goes out to the crowd and I don't know what he was doing if he was groping people in the crowd or hugging them or kissing them I, I couldn't tell I just I just see him you know this giant clown guy like going to the crowd and like just bend over people <laughs> <laughs> so he's, he's an awesome dude I can't wait for Dragon Con because that's you know the Thursday uh that it starts usually uh, a bunch of the adults of guys will go out to Trader Vix. Ah, yes, yes. That's where uh, the, the the bartender over there is a really attractive female, right? Yeah, actually upstairs. Ah, all right. I, I, I got the uh, pleasure of meeting her last year. Ah, yes. She has the... Uh, she has a way to stun people with her entrance. <laughs> yeah, she was very flashy, I can tell you that much. Yes, well... Not, not your typical, you know, bartender, my name is Joe. No. Uh, drink. If, if, if I remember correctly, uh, she was dressed up as, with the FBI logo on, on her butt. Mm, One I... of the times, yeah. Maybe it wasn't the time I saw her. I forget. She was dressed up. Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, how how was uh, the size of the audience that was at this place? Was it a decent the crowd? The size was fairly decent, I would say. Uh, you know, they had a Facebook page beforehand, mm-hmm. and I believe people that were looking to attend were somewhere between 350 and 375 people. Well, that's not bad. No, not at all. And and the venue was amazing. I've never been to uh, Nokia Theater in Times Square. It's a fairly new venue for New York. So, all right. D- describe like uh, you know, the insides and stuff like that. Was it was it good? You know, how was how was the feel getting into the place? The feel getting into the place was nice. You know, it's it's very commercial because it's it's owned by Nokia. Clearly, mm-hmm. you know, you go down into the into the bowels of the, the theater. And the first thing you're approached by someone from Nokia uh, who works there saying, hey, would you like to win a free gift card or a chance to win a free gift card? Mm-hmm. And they type out all this information on this little, on this teeny tiny Nokia phone, and you find out you don't win the gift card. <laughs> and then you go in, and the theater was pretty impressive, I had to say. I, I, I was thinking it would probably be a little bit bigger. Okay. But it was pretty big for what it was. 